One way that I've really combined art and technology, or to use technology to create art, is um, I'm, a, I'm a sculptor, except I sculpt things you can't see. So I sculpt micro and nano structures that are too small to see, uh, and then I look at them using a scanning electron microscope. So I make these structures the same way that you make a computer chip in a clean room with the bunny suit on. They're really, really small, you know, and 100,000 times smaller than a hair sometimes. And, uh, and I make them really small, and then I get in there with an electron microscope and bounce electrons off of them, and then collect those electrons so that you can see the structures. So I'm kind of like a, a, a micro or nano sculptor. I think it's important to realize that nanotechnology is already being used all around us. It's, it's in sunscreen that you put on your face. It's in pants that don't let things, you know, don't get stains in them. Um, obviously, it's all over through electronics. Um, and I think that we're going to just see nanotechnology coming into our lives more and more, and we may not even realize it. Oh, I, I love talking about the gecko. Man. That's one of my favorite things to do. You know, geckos, they climb up walls and across ceilings. And uh, it's really cool. What enables them to walk is they have this really neat adhesive that lets them stick and unstick from a surface uh, over and over and over again, so fast that they can run. And so scientists have been looking into how that adhesive works. And now we know enough where we can start to make artificial gecko adhesive. And, and so doing this, I was able to make the world's first adhesive that you can turn on and off electronically. So you stick it to a surface and it's stuck. You flip the switch, you turn it off and it comes right off. Pretty cool. It's like Velcro without the other side. If Mike thinks being a test subject for Joe and Zaz will be easy, he's in for a shock. <laughs> Thanks, Mike, for another sacrifice in the name of science. Okay, some things people might not know about me. Um, I hold the land speed record for a Viking ship. This is a, a project that I did where I took a very small little Ford Courier chassis and I chopped everything off it and built out a 27 foot long Viking ship on it, complete with a dragon head on the front with a gasoline powered flamethrower. It was, a, it, was a, it was a quite a vehicle to drive around. Um, I put over 3,000 miles on it uh, and had a lot of fun with it. It, was, it was actually turned out to be quite an engineering challenge. Um, I also speak Swedish fluently. Uh, I don't own a car, um, I've been published in Nature, and um, I absolutely hate olives. Ugh, just thinking about it. The story of how I got on the show goes back a little while. Um, in 2002 I did a show for Discovery on Crop Circles with a couple of other friends of mine from MIT. And that was just kind of random. The people that were looking for someone that uh, would do any old crazy thing and uh, someone suggested my name and this friend of mine, Mark, and so we, we did that show. Uh, fast forward a few years and uh, one day I got a phone call from a friend of mine. I was at the lab and she said, uh, hey, can you bring some of your prototypes over uh, to show them off because we're trying to get a TV show off the ground. So I said, sure, you know. I brought along my Schallfaust and I brought my Zox box, which was actually designed by my friend Mark, but it's a little music synthesizer, and just showed them off for the cameras. And then I went home. I didn't feel like I was trying out for anything. I thought I was just helping get some prototyping TV show started. So about two months later, I got a, a phone call um, and they said, we love your casting tape. We want you on the show. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't send any, any casting tape. And it turned out they'd taken the footage of displaying these prototypes and they'd cut it together with excerpts from the Crop Circle show and made a casting tape, all without my knowledge, and sent it off, had it approved, and, uh, and that was it. The headset is picking up electrical signals from Zaza's brain that are fed into the computer. And when he calms himself enough and concentrates, the computer triggers a motor that pulls down a wire, bending the spoon. That spoon looks bent. Yuri Geller, eat your heart out. I've always liked to tinker with things and, and uh, build things, and I um, always like to make them look really, really cool too, and like put a lot of effort into them aesthetically. And uh, you know, one day someone said, "Oh, I really like your artworks," and I was like, "Oh, they're just things that I do." But uh, you know, to, to some people, they're they're actual works of art. And I ended up getting arts funding for some of the things. So the Funkenschnorkel was actually funded by the Council for the Arts at MIT, and it's a wearable sound broadcast system. So 
It's this big backpack and it has all these tubes going everywhere uh, and it's got speakers inside the tubes and you can wear this and carry it around and blast whatever sounds that you want out, out, out of these tubes and it sort of amplifies what you can do as an individual. You know, you could walk down the street screaming but uh, why not walk down the street you know, broadcasting uh, your own soundtrack and it's got a microphone so you can say things and it just lets you sort of interact with the space in a, in a, more, in a more full way auditorially. Uh, so that was, a, that was a project I was really happy with. When I focus hard and make that cube move forward, it should go into drive, so you should see that with those wheels spin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, unlimited funds, to me, would mean unlimited projects. Because uh, I don't like to work on the same thing all the time. Um, some people, you know, they go into science uh, especially or engineering and they have a specialty and that's their thing and they do it all the time. And I'm not one of those people. I like to work on a lot of different things and use skills in a lot of different areas. So um, if I had unlimited funds, I'd be creating lots of projects and I'd be hiring other people to come on and help. You know, that's the other thing is no one, uh, the, the idea of a lone genius that tinkers in, in their basement and comes out with a fully fledged thing, it doesn't really exist. You know, it's teams build great things. And without the other guys on this team, none of the projects that we've attempted would ever have been finished. 